Since the end of 2019, I was looking for the tools that will help me to improve my works and allow me to create imagery at the level I want. I tried different render engines, tried switching to other 3D softwares, but the story was more or less the same. I felt limited until one day when I was offered to try Clarice. I have to admit, it was fun reading your comments and see you guys trying to guess what software I use. I totally forgot about Unreal Engine, which is currently on version 5.2. No, it's not Unreal 5, it's Clarice 5. I'm super pumped about it and today we're doing its overview. I'm not sure how I missed this software because it handles my craziest demands. I missed it probably the same way as you did. Have you heard about Clarice? Neither have I. This is probably due to how young I Isotropics is. Clarice was first released in 2012. For the context, softwares like Maya, Cinema 4D, even Houdini were all released in the 1990s. This huge gap in time means Clarice is built with fundamentally different principles at its core. To get you excited before we dive deeper, you've seen Clarice in quite a few feature films over the last decade. And there are, of course, many reasons why big studios deciding to bring Clarice on board. Some of these reasons we will try to understand today. The main and most simplistic explanation is that Clarice virtually does not have any polygon limits. It can handle trillions of polygons while maintaining an interactive viewport. You heard me right, trillions. To prove this to myself, I've made a rainforest at dawn. I just dropped thousands of highest quality trees into this scene, all made and exported from Speedtree. No cheating, no proxies, raw geometry. This study for me was also a great introduction to a set dressing philosophy as such. At first, I didn't really understand why would I uh, need Clarice? Why would I be interested? This is because the concept of set dressing and look dev tool does not settle in the head that easily. The concept is Clarice is an additional production stage in your pipeline. You create your assets somewhere C4D, Blender, Houdini, Maya, and then bring it to Clarice for look dev and rendering. Why would you want that extra step? No polygon limits, that we already know, but as a set dressing tool, Clarice has some special workflows to enhance your experience, like shading layers, for example. I've made another study and recorded the majority of the process. I will be publishing the full work with a comprehensive breakdown and all the details. In this study, I use shading layers. Shading layers and shading groups are developed to minimize the need for manual texturing. You model once, assign shading groups, assign materials to shading groups in Clarice, and shading layer will shade your objects automatically. As long as shading groups are preserved, you can update your assets as many times as you need and your shading will be intact. It may not sound as much, and I have to confess, when I was listening to presentations on the topic on YouTube, it didn't make sense to me either. So I encourage you to spend some time with shading layers and it will start making sense. It becomes especially effective when you're working with hundreds of assets that are sharing the same shaders, like 100 buildings that have same concrete shader or glass shader or rooftop, whatever. Just make shading groups properly on the modeling stage and then shading layer in Clarice will shade your buildings automatically, all hundred of them. The next major thing is scattering tools. This lunar shot, you could have thought, oh, nice ground texture, but it's actually hundreds of thousands of megascan rocks scattered across the surface and interacting with shaders normal. Shader itself is pretty simple. In total, there are quite a few uh, rocks scattered across this scene in various sizes and positions. Such load is easily achievable with uh, Clarice scattering tools. You can bake point clouds. You can use internal tools to bake the points, but I recommend baking point clouds externally as Alembic files. That way it won't take any RAM, it will load back in seconds, and proceduralism is not lost. You can just re-export Alembics if you need. Super complexity is achievable very fast in a very efficient manner. Scatter tools similar to shaders can be driven by different procedural things like uh, noises, 
or scopes, which are masks in Clarice, or occlusion of objects, anything you want. Another fundamental thing to understand before using scatters are combiners. Combiners allow you to, well, combine geometry, then feed that to a point cloud which scatterers are referencing. Whatever I say, probably is super confusing. <laughs> For example, you made five different terrains that you want to use to form your overall scene look. And then you want to plant some trees on these mountains. You build your overall look, you can instantiate your initial geometry to make everything super efficient. When you finished, you put all of this into one combiner. You then scatter points on the combiner. And then you tell scatterer to use these points to plant trees. It works great, it looks good. But let's say you decided to change the terrain. You want a mountain peak in the middle of your scene. You go for it, you add it, and then you just add that particular piece of geometry to your combiner. The point cloud and scatterers will get updated accordingly because they're not referencing each individual piece of geometry. They're referencing one big combiner that you can change as you wish. And the point cloud and scatterers will get updated automatically. This is why it is important to understand combiners before using scatterers. You don't have to scatter millions of objects on the surfaces to get detailed textures, by the way. I just did it because I could. Instead, you can subdivide your geometry thousands of times. Tens of thousands of times if you need to. You would need a super high resolution texture for it to make sense though. Not going to pretend I understand exactly how Clarice internals working, but from what I understand it works by streaming geometry instead of actually loading it into the scene like Cinema 4D and other DCCs are doing. If you would look your scene size in Clarice it will be several kilobytes just because it's several lines of code representing where you've put some objects and where to find them on your system. The tiny project size means it gets saved constantly. Every few seconds it saves. And if it crashes, there will be a crash file that will allow you to get back to exactly where you left off. Yes, crashes do happen when you push your system to the limits or if you're not optimizing the scene properly, like with the point clouds. Sometimes you may do something and even corrupt your scene, but not to worry because you can open your project file with a notepad, find what you did last, the element you were working on last, disable it, or delete it and the scene will load back like nothing ever happened. Another big brownie point goes to Clarice for its unbiased render engine. Yeah, that thing I love so much. Watch my how does rendering work video to find out more. Shading in Clarice is like Octane, Redshift and Houdini mixed together. Overall, very pleasing experience. The thing that got a bit of time to use to our contexts and the fact that you can share some nodes between several shaders. For example, a constant color node can drive uh, the scale of the texture in one shader and in another one at the same time. This is probably a very simple example. But if you need to pull out the same attribute from several Houdini simulations, this becomes particularly helpful. Speaking of Houdini, Clarice is very friendly to any attributes you may want to put in your Olympic files. It can read it all. This is one of the reasons big studios love Clarice so much. Whether it's a sim or a procedural asset with animated UVs and multiplied velocity, no problem. You can be sure Clarice will read it all properly. Another thing I really like is viewport in progressive mode. And not to think about it like Octane IPR or Redshift IPR, this is a different feeling. It's not the renderer actually, it's just a preview, but a very good one. You can instantly see how your scene is looking like, adjust it and denoise it if it helps your perception. Viewport, as well as any other UI element, is customizable. You can build your workspace as you like. What suits you? Is it a single screen setup, double screen setup, triple screen setup? Whatever you want, it's all customizable. Getting back to render engine, at the moment it's CPU only rendering, but Isotropics is close to releasing their hybrid engine that is called NG, and it's supposed to be 10 times faster 
according to tests shown on Isotropic's channel. There are a lot of jokes about it, the community is waiting for it eagerly. To get you excited, I will leave some links in the video description so that you could see the tests yourself. What about scalability? Clarice works perfectly fine with Deadline Render Manager. I use it a lot. All my renders are going through it. And in terms of licensing, you need one master license for each workstation where you will be actually creating the scenes. And then you need one license for each machine in the render form and they are called C nodes. In terms of pricing for what Clarice is, I think it's a very reasonable price. I will leave the links to the pricing in the video description as well. In addition to all that, recently Clarice 5 was released where Isotropics introduced geolites and emission importance sampling. Again, in this lunar shot, there actually are no lights except the sun. The lunar base and the rover are lit with textures. Now you can light entire cities with shaders and it will look like actual light. How crazy is that? This, in a nutshell, what emission importance sampling is. If this fact on its own does not impress you, I will leave some links in the video description for some of the Isotropics presentations. You can go there, check out the presentations, and I promise you, you will get excited. Isotropics community deserves a special mention. Even though I'm not an active Discord user or anything, I see people helping out each other all the time. If you're stuck, someone will help you. Same applies to glitches and bugs. If you get it reported properly, it will get fixed in the next uh, service pack. And service packs are released quite often. The Isotropics team provided me with a special coupon for you, my beloved subscribers. The coupon grants you 30% discount in case you decide to give Clarice a shot. The details are in the video description. How many times I said video description in this video? And the coupon will be valid for 90 days after this video went live. This would be the end of my short overview of this amazing software, but really there are so many things to talk about. Please, in the comments, let me know. Would you be interested in Clarice tutorials. To summarize, Clarice is indeed my new look dev and rendering tool. I've built a render farm specifically for Clarice and soon I will be transferring my whole commercial workflow into Clarice. The software is so good, it's shocking that it's not as popular as other DCCs. And to be honest, it feels like giving out a million dollar secret. Moment of self-promotion. There are new assets available in my store. Some terrain packs that I use to assemble both locations shown in this video. And also a rig for a six-wheel rover in Cinema 4D. There is no rover itself available, you will have to put your own geometry, but what's good about that rig is that it interacts with the ground, so whatever tires you will put in there, they will leave a track on the geometry. It may be useful in so many cases. Go check it out. All the links are in the video description. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and consider subscribing because it will help the channel grow. I noticed that majority of people watching my videos are not subscribed. It will make more interesting content possible. See you soon. Peace.